Welcome to the Postpartum Coach Podcast, where we embrace our needs as moms, we learn to lead ourselves first, then our families, and where we create our own healing from the inside out to find our way to the work we were meant to do in this world. I'm your host, a fellow mom of three and a certified life coach, Lizzie Langston. Welcome back to the Postpartum Coach Podcast. I'm a little giddy today. I have a friend and also um, technically a client, although today we're coming at you as two uh, professionals that love to help moms with various things. But my friend Michaela is here. Michaela, say hi. Hello, ladies. I'm so excited to be here. Yes. I wish you could all see her. She's got the most delicious blonde hair. I always compliment on her all, <laughs> over and over. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah. Michaela, why don't you just tell us a little bit about you and I, and then you and you, and give us an introduction and how we are here today. This is so fun. Yes. Happy to. Um, so my name is Michaela. I have a 13-month-old little boy. Um, so I found Lizzie in my postpartum experience. Um, and I'm a part of her membership now. I absolutely love it. Um, so we get to talk weekly. Um, and it's really supported me and got me to where I am today. But I decided um, to get into the postpartum world and helping women support them with food and weight loss, if that's their goal, because of my own experience with it. So Ooh, I, can't, I love a good story. We're like, <laughs> yes. everyone get comfortable. Let's hear Michaela's yeah, story. <laughs> weight loss, postpartum. So, so good. Yeah. So I have my degree in nutrition um, and I always chose to study nutrition because I super valued health, but also loved food. Like I love food so much. So um, that's why I said decided to study it so that I could really find the balance in both of how can we enjoy a super delicious food that's really nourishing, but also very much enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that's what got me into it. And so I had a business for five years doing personal shopping, using the best of both of those worlds, which was super fun. That's amazing. Um, I would create the meals for my clients. I create the recipes, you know, the plan for them, whatever they were, whatever it was, if it was uh, paleo or allergy friendly. Um, and then I would go into their home and cook meals for them each can, week to support them. I thought, can I, can I like brag about you for just a minute? Like <laughs> as an entrepreneur who's run her own business for over three years mm-hmm. to say like, to just be like, yeah, I was a personal se- chef in like a fancy area for like five years and probably had people who had very, you know, specific requirements, maybe even expectations. And you knocked it out of the park. Like you basically, (laughs) you're you're, like, your business grew so much that you had to be like, okay, wait, I don't know. Like I'll let you tell that story, but I just wanted to brag a little bit because I just wanted to make sure everybody knew how good you are at your job of, of you know, you. knowing what people should have and finding them good recipes and teaching them and nourishing them. Oh, so I don't know if you, well, whatever you want to share. Thanks, Lizzie. I love it. <laughs> yeah, but it was super awesome. Um, we were in the San Francisco Bay Area, and I filled up my schedule helping clients. And then um, from there, since I was busy, I just started to hire chefs to help me where I'd create the recipes, and then they would go cook it for clients. And then found out we were having a little baby boy, so then had to grow it from there and had somebody who was helping me with all the back end, and then had three and four chefs that would go cook for our wonderful clients. So um, it was really cool. And I learned so much about lots of different diets and how to do meal prep quickly, um, which I love to teach to moms, uh, because obviously we don't have all the time in the world. <laughs> we need to be efficient. Yeah, um, and efficient. also how to design your weekly meals to be everything you and your family needs. Um, oh. So that's kind of how I got into that. And it was a wonderful journey. And uh, then I had my baby. Then I had my baby, like says every business owner, mom, like then I had my baby and I had to step back and be like, whoa, wait a second. What does my body need? What does my family need? Is this business working for my family? So, so tell us where you've gone since becoming a mom. How old is your baby now? You said 13 months. Yep. He's 13 months now. Mm -hmm. So you've had 13 Um, months of motherhood plus all these five years of nutrition experience. So, oh my gosh, I'm like, what do you got for us? I'm so excited. Yes. So of course it's a whole new world once you are in postpartum (laughs) and you have a lot less time and you have all these nutritional needs, especially right postpartum, you know, your body needs so much recovery and so much love and nutrition. Um, and then 
moving on, then you might have weight to lose, which I did. And so, um, I was applying all the things that had worked for me before I had, you know, had my baby of like these calorie restricted diets or working out for an hour a day. And those things were not working for me. Yet. I think so a lot I'm of so women frustrated. have that experience. Exactly. Yeah. Cause our bodies are different, you know, and it's just the way it is and it's okay. And it's just learning, you know, how to give our body that love and nourish it the way that is best for each individual. Everybody's different. Right. Yeah. Um, but I figured out what worked for me, but it honestly was such a difficult time in my life because because the body image was really getting to me. And that's honestly what got me into the most depressive times that I've ever experienced. Um, I think so many moms, like one of the drivers that kind of uh, escalates depressiveness, even if they were already susceptible is this body image thing. Can we, can we talk Mm -hmm. about that for a minute? Because as a nutritionist and as somebody who's been there, done that, who's walked the path of postpartum, who's worked on her own weight loss, Um, I don't know if you just want to speak a little bit to like, yeah, the body image piece of it. It's so real. Yeah, it's real and it's, it's difficult. And I would see, you know, other moms, like I said, who felt like they really loved their body for bringing their beautiful baby into the world. And I wanted to feel that, but just didn't, you know, I felt frustrated and disgusted, honestly, with what I saw. Um, and so it is it's really hard. And when you feel like you're trying everything and you're sleep deprived and you have all this newness of this new little life that you're taking care of, um, and taking care of yourself, you know, postpartum, if you had, I had a traumatic, pretty long birth, um, that didn't go like I expected. So all those things compiling and then, um, your body is just so different. It's really, it was difficult for me. And I know for other moms too, it's difficult to, feel positive about it for me at least it was to just be like it's okay I had a difficult time yeah with that and that was something I had to work work really hard on but it can get better it can get better I love that you um you are so like an advocate for both like you're an advocate for mental health and you've definitely done a lot of work in that area just having seen you (laughs) in my program for a while now But it just feels like you keep coming back to food as like this medicine that you nurture yourself with. And there's no, like you can mental health all all day long and like learn depression and anxiety and stuff. But I I would love to hear a little bit about, because to me, it's inspiring your relationship with food and the way, I don't know, like the role it plays in your life and the role it has played in your healing. Um, I don't know, Michaela, it just feels like you have this really beautiful faith in food. And I don't know if you want to speak on that. Yeah, I, I definitely feel that way. I feel like food is so nourishing. My uh, last business cleverly nourished is called, it was called cleverly nourished because I truly think that's what food does. We, if we focus on that, it can, we can be really clever about how it nourishes us and food is that. So, you know, what I, there's lots of different diets, lots of different people focus on paleo or vegan, but I think when it comes down to it, just focusing on the basics of getting, you know, the best quality ingredients that you can, um, and not putting too much pressure on yourself, just focus on those simple things. Okay. So now I'm asking the question to myself and I'm sure other people are wondering from a nutritionist's perspective and from also a mom of a 13 month old and all this experience, you know, like chefing, is that what you call it? Chefing? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Chefing for people. That's awesome. It's not cooking. It's chefing, Chefing. (laughs) but you do plenty of cooking for your, your little crew. Um, What should we be focused? Like, what are your pillars? If you were to teach me as like one of your people, like what, what is your kind of, what are your pillars? What do you think we should be focusing on? We'd love to hear. Definitely. So it changed postpartum and it, it was when I saw results that this is what has been working so beautifully for me postpartum. And so this is what I love to work with moms on. Um, and so I'll tell you first kind of what wasn't serving me in that early postpartum time that I think was the cause of more, like I did have more weight loss after I had, or I'm sorry, weight gain after I had my baby. And I was like, what is happening? So I was breastfeeding him and he was underweight. So I felt like my milk supply was not enough. So I was reaching for all of the different lactation boosting foods, a lot of which are carbs. And so I'm not anti-carb at all. 
Um, obviously the keto diet is very in right now, but what I found for myself, that was what I was doing differently than what I had done all along. And before I had my baby, I had always been at a very stable, healthy weight. So I found that I was reaching for more carbs in the morning specifically when I was newly postpartum, I was eating lots of oatmeal or electrolytes that had, um, not tons, but a decent amount of sugar in them. And I was not seeing weight loss for myself on that approach. So Mm -hmm. what I switched to that's really been working for me still has carbs. I think carbs are still important, um, but it's just all about how much and when. So what I do now is a lower carb approach, but I always have carbs in the evening because it, it helps very much with restorative sleep. So we need as women carbs in the evening so we can have deep, restful, healing sleep. Does it also um, help in the, with breast milk? If you eat carbs in the evening, does that help boost your breast milk supply? Do you think? I think that carbs are still necessary, but I don't think um, having them in the evening affects it. So okay. what I'm doing the rest of the day, I think has helped. So okay. um, it's head higher in fat. Um, about 70% of what I eat is healthy fats. And I think for me, did you say really 70, matters. 70% of what 70% you eat? 70% of my calories Dang girl. are healthy fat. And, and yeah. you're at the weight you want to be at. You've lost yes. weight. So as soon as I switched to this, I really started seeing dramatic healthy results and my milk supply was not dropping. So I had tried the things that had worked for me before, like calorie restriction or portion control, intermittent fasting, and those all made my milk supply drop. And I just really didn't want to continue those things because I wanted it to breastfeed my baby, but I still, and I wasn't seeing weight loss with those either. Um, so when I switched to this, my milk supply did not drop. It was very consistent. Um, he was exclusively breastfed and, and still is breastfeeding right now. <laughs> okay. um, so my milk supply was great on this diet because fats are super nourishing for our body. But I really like to focus on the healthy fats as a nutritionist. So avocado, you know, avocado products, avocado oil, um, olives, coconut. Um, you could do pasture, grass-fed dairy if that's something you enjoyed. So lots of nourishing healthy fats because our body and our hormones as women really need those healthy fats. And I think a lot of times we're not getting enough. Um, okay. So Like I've said, a lot of it is healthy fats. And then... Is that um, one of your pillars is just the healthy fats? Like that would be... one of my pillars. Pillar number one is 70... Pillar number one. That's crazy to me. I love it though. Like it's blowing my mind a little bit. But you're a walking testimonial. 70% healthy fat. Fats. Yep. And then I do about... I don't track these things every single day. I recommend to people if you want to be the most consistent with, if you are consistent with tracking, you'll get results probably a little quicker, but it's not super realistic as a mom to say, track everything you eat every day. I don't do it personally. And I've still got amazing results. Okay. So about when you start tracking, you get an idea of how your body feels, how hungry you are, um, what your meals will look like. So then you have kind of, you know, a blueprint of what your meals can look like. And you can go back and check back in and track if you want to, um, to kind of see how you're doing. When you're tracking, you're not just tracking the foods you're eating. You're also kind of trying to pay attention to like your hunger cycles, right? Your cravings. Okay. Yeah. So good to know. I'm always paying, I like to still, you know, intuitively eat, eat when I'm hungry. So if I'm not hungry first thing in the morning, I'll eat when I am hungry. Cause I truly believe that our body is, you know, talking to us and giving us those signals if we're paying attention to them. So what this does when you're eating higher fat and you're eating, you know, lean pro lots of healthy protein as well. And then, um, definitely the carbs in the evening, like I said, so you're sleeping well, but it gets our body into a fat burning mode. So that's why it is works so wonderfully for weight loss because you don't even have to, I wasn't really working out <laughs> to right. be honest during yeah, this time of I mean, my life. I was so busy. We were moving. I had a new baby. I was working and I just didn't have the time. Um, that it seemed like it was going to take to do it that way. So I got these results without working out too much, was really, which was really encouraging to me. Yeah, um, um, I'm like, that's a ding, 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 win, win, win for the, yeah. for the mamas. Yeah, I mean, I've never been much of a worker outer. My husband like went yep. through a phase of being really into the gym. And mm-hmm. um, I tried to get into it with him. And I don't know, just the gym is for sure not, if I am going to be a worker outer person, like into it, <laughs> it ain't going to be the gym. Um, (laughs) that's number one. And then number two is, I don't know. I just, I don't find that I enjoy like working out in, in a gym sense of the word. I like to go on walks and all that stuff, but postpartum, 
yeah, we're a little bit more homebound, especially post pandemic. Exactly. And mm -hmm. um, a little a little more strapped for time. And our energy, we have to kind of budget our energy. <laughs> exactly. Right? Because and so like if we can lose weight, which is a result that a lot of us care about, whatever point that hits you, like like Michaela and I were just talking before we started recording, some women it's like three months in, they're ready to like focus on weight loss. And some of them, it's more like, some of us, it's more like 12 to 18 months. But whenever mm -hmm. that point hits, I love that the idea, what you're saying is basically the way that you can tailor people's diets can help them maintain or lose weight without having mm -hmm. to like build in a big gym routine postpartum. Exactly. And it feels very doable. And what I do love about incorporating all those healthy fats is you don't feel like you're being restricted. You're not, you're not starving. You feel very satiated um, and very energized. I found I had way more energy um, doing this diet. Um, and I, you know, I don't love to call it a diet, honestly, um, because it's just so I do really see it, like you said, as a way of nourishing yourself, of just really being choosing yeah. the best ingredients you can. It doesn't have to be organic if you would like it to and can get it. Beautiful. But if you can't, that's okay. Just think about, you know, are is your family getting vegetables? Are you eating, you know, things that are going to make you feel good? Yeah. Um, so that's what I like to focus on. Um, and this structure just for me worked so beautifully. And I know other moms also, it's helping them just be able to lose the weight without having to go to the gym. Um, mm. And it does, you can, you know, start it whenever you feel ready, but it doesn't feel super restrictive like other diets that I personally have tried, you know, where you're like, uh, I'm on a diet. Yes. <laughs> so I do love that about it. You know, I love this. This is so um, against what we're programmed to believe, which is that weight loss is hard. I remember, yes. so I gained with both of my, so I've, I've had three kids for those who don't know in four <laughs> years and with my third, I found myself with like not quite 50 pounds extra, but enough to where I was buying all new clothes to be able to fit and feel good in clothing. And mm -hmm. like that messes with your mind a little bit. I mean, I don't care it how, does. I don't care how much of a body love, self love advocate you are and how good you are at thought work. Yeah. Putting on clothes that don't fit you, like it's not typically a, a nice conversation. Um, yeah. Yeah. Having pockets. to wear your, your postpartum or your pregnancy clothes postpartum. Because but like, the but like up. way, like we're talking like past a few months, it was like the whole year. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. Mine was like nine. When I really hit the, the change point, when I started implementing this diet, I was eight months postpartum and I was like, what is going on? I, yeah. you know, I was just getting in a really bad place with mm -hmm. myself. Yeah. It's really yeah. hard to have everything be tight or you need to wear your stretchy yeah. pregnancy pants. So, it's totally hard. Um, and it's hard on you. Yeah. Mentally. And also your body. Like, I think for me, like, yes, there was some vanity for sure. Like I wanted to look good, but I remember yeah. I was in a yoga class. We were living with my in-laws cause I was in the crux of my depression and anxiety. We sold our house. I really couldn't function, um, mm -hmm. like with the kids. So they were helping us with the kids. Basically we were, we were living with them. Right. So we could have this help. Um, and so sometimes she would take the kids at night and I would go to this little yoga class at the rec center. And I remember just sitting and looking at my, I was on the front row. So I was right in front of the mirror and I just, I just was like, we're, I'm going to go to target right now and get clothes that fit me. And then I'm also going to choose a way to help my body get back to the, the way it likes to feel. So yes, yes there were I like, that. I could, I could see the rolls in the mirror, but there was also this like this just doesn't feel good when I walk. It doesn't, it doesn't just like, you know, mm -hmm. um, yeah, totally. So you know, and I, like, I'm all about yeah. that. And I think, um, you know, the body positivity movement is big and it is important, but I like to say, you know, from a nutritionist standpoint, because obviously there is a healthier way to be at for longevity and everything. So instead of hating yourself into being skinnier or more fit, it's really about loving yourself, you know, loving your body, loving her into being, a, you know, the better version of yourself always and being yeah. healthy. So you can be healthier for your kids and live a long life and feel better, be more energetic. So it's really that approach of loving yourself into it instead of hating yourself because that process just doesn't work as nicely yeah. or feel as good. <laughs> Definitely not. And it's, it never ends up being sustainable. Like when we try to make yeah. changes from not, not the love. Um, yeah, it's, it's a little bumpier. 
Okay, this is yes. so good. So to wrap it up with a bow, so far you've got you you have us eating higher percentages of healthy fats, mm-hmm. carbs in the evening, mm-hmm. and what was the other one? Um, lots of protein. You know, I have protein at about every, definitely protein at every meal. Eating protein keeps your blood sugar stable. So we want that also okay. for our energy levels or weight loss. So at every meal, I'm having protein, healthy fat, and then at dinner, having about a half a cup of a non-starchy vegetable. Um, oh, I'm sorry. You can have any any kind of carbs that you like, really, but ones that are more slow burning are going to be best for your blood sugar, which slow is burning. always super important. So, um, like so that'd be things like sweet potatoes, yeah. quinoa, brown rice. Okay. So instead yeah. of pasta, you still could have, if you, I'd say that'd be the, that would be, op, you know, the best option if you can stick with those healthier carbs. But if you really want pasta, I'm like, have the pasta, you okay. know, in the evening and just, you know, have that about a half a cup. Um, don't go overboard so that you can stay in that fat burning mode. But I don't love to, on any diet, restrict too many items because it can just get us into, again, a really, um, sometimes toxic mindset of I can't have that. And then you end up wanting it more because you can't have it. It's like the forbidden fruit thing. So if there's something that you are wanting, have some, um, but don't, don't overdo it if you can. Okay. Can we talk just for a second about portions? Um, yeah. So like, what are your rules of thumb? Just, just really quickly, like on your day to day, how do you manage portions? How do you feel that out? Do you have any like quick little tips that you can give us to help make sure we're eating appropriate amounts? Sure. Um, so obviously for mama's postpartum and especially for breastfeeding, you do need lots of protein. So that's usually where I start and focus on. So I would say at each meal, um, if you could be having about 20 grams, which I know that's difficult to visualize. So But that would be ideal. At least 20 20 grams at each meal is ideal in nutrition terms. So what that looks like um, is like three eggs at breakfast. Or you can have, you know, a piece of meat about the size of your palm. Um, So if you're eating, you know, chicken or steak, something like that, you want to have it be about that size. Um, And follow your body's cues. If you eat that much and you're finding I'm still hungry, have some more, you know, it's okay. Your body needs protein to heal, to function, to make breast milk. Um, so that is okay. I can eat as much until you feel satiated. What about Um, on the health? Yeah. I was just going to say a vegan protein option. Um, vegan protein options will be a little bit tricky on this diet, honestly, because a lot of them are beans, obviously, um, which do have carbs. So I tend to focus on more on diets that do include animal protein personally, okay. Okay. Um, just because that's what worked for me. And yeah. I know I did tons of vegan cooking when I was a personal chef and then think that can be a really healthy diet. But as far as my approach for postpartum weight loss, that is primarily okay. who I worked with. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, but you could definitely do tofu. Obviously, that um, is protein source, has not as much carbs as beans. So that is an option. Tofu. I love it. Good. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And then, yeah. So you were saying for protein, 20 grams, mm-hmm. 20 grams. And then for fat, um, I usually like for breakfast, I'll have three eggs with a half an avocado and some sauteed spinach. Um, at lunch, I might, I usually, we can get into next is kind of how I implement all of this. So what I do for dinner is I cook extra. So it's called batch cooking. So then I'll have it left over for lunch. So lunch is usually a leftover dinner portion. So like I was saying, it's about that palm sized piece of protein. Um, and then for lunch, I'll have usually, um, about two cups of non-starchy vegetables. So that would be like sauteed greens or asparagus. Um, anything that isn't like sweet potato, something squash that's a little bit more carby. Those are still great, healthy vegetables, but I would just enjoy those in the evening. Yeah. So then like lunch, we have the protein, we have the vegetables, and then at dinner, I'm adding in that half a cup of, roughly half a cup um, of carbs. So then I'm sleeping really well at night and adding in, you know, fat. It might be drizzled with olive oil. If it's a piece of salmon that has lots of healthy fats in it, um, you could be putting on olives, lots of different options. You could do a curry that has coconut milk. So lots of nourishing fats going in. Mm, I love that. Thank you so yeah. much. That's so helpful. Yeah. So you've kind of broken down like 
how we should be dividing into the carbs, fats, and proteins for postpartum to keep, to, to not mess with your breast milk, but then to also keep your weight gain at a minimum or down, um, mm-hmm. like even weight loss. And then, um, you have the portion sizes. You already talked about that. I think it sounds amazing. Mm-hmm. I'm like, do you have Thank like, you. do you have like, what, where can we find you? Where, where would someone, if they wanted to learn more from you? Yeah, definitely. I would love to hear from you all. And I can go more into like with my clients is how to implement this, you know, because everyone's life is different and busy. And how do you fit cooking into your schedule? Um, That's what I see is that it's tough for moms to focus on all this and then have the time. So that's where my past knowledge as a personal chef really can help of, hey, is meal prep going to work best or the batch cooking? Um, Is it, you know, cooking two batches of protein at night. So then you can spread it out between two days and two different flavors so that your family's happy with the variety. So there's lots of options um, that we can do, but you can find me on Instagram at chef.michaela and Michaela is spelled Michael with an A M I C H A E L A. That's cool. Chef.michaela. Mm-hmm. That's great. I love it. You're like a, a win. It's like a win-win because I feel like I learned some stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, I always knew that fats were healthy, but like I, I remember the last generation being like, no fat, no fat, stay away from fat. And then I remember yeah. this generation being like, no fats are good for you. And I feel like you are then giving us a little bit more guidance on how to balance your fat intake with your carbs and your proteins. And even when in the day to use carbs, that was yeah. also something I hadn't considered and I didn't know about um, carbs and your sleep, your restorative sleep. Yeah. And I love that you carry like this intuitive eating kind of friendly philosophy and just mm-hmm. that you've used Yay. food, you've used food to work with being a postpartum mom and, and, you know, listening to your body, you've learned how to feed your body postpartum to keep your breast milk up, but then to take the weight loss or the weight gain down. Yes. Which yes. Feels like yeah. Magic. I, I do see food as so it can, it can be your friend, you know, it can be so healing and nourishing. It doesn't have to be the enemy, which if you can feel very much like it is the enemy when you're struggling with weight loss of what do I eat to get, you know, this change to happen and to feel really good about myself again yeah. and happy and proud. So I love it, it can be all of the things. Very cool. Can I ask you real quick, what role did the membership play um, in all this? I'm just curious, like, where were you? Um, Of course. Yeah. How did that work? Yeah. I mean, for me, I had, you know, the background nutrition of the understanding of food. And then once I figured out which diet worked, that was great for my weight loss results. But obviously weight loss and motherhood postpartum, you know, it's so much mindset. It's so much it's so much mental health that I hadn't ever dug into. Honestly, um, my half of my family is on antidepressants. I was prescribed them at 21 for anxiety. So I've always struggled with it, but I never, um, really got help because there was a bit of stigma around it in my family. Um, but I got to such a point at postpartum that I was like, I can't, I'm not functioning like I want to. And I'm, you know, more, depressed than I've ever been. And it wasn't, it wasn't me. So in searching, you know, in searching for help, I found Lizzie and I was so thankful and knew that that's what I needed. Um, and I went through, um, her coaching program and now I'm part of her membership because it just feels like it's such a support, you know, to see other moms in the membership of they're going through the same thing and you're not alone. And just even hearing their, you know, what they're struggling with always helps me, you know, Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't even realize that, you know, that's happening and a thing that I'm worrying about, but it is. So it's been just that mental health piece and having support really. We need so much support postpartum. Um, It's been life changing. So thank you, Lizzie. (laughs) I'm so glad I told her not to gush about my membership. (laughs) I'm like, (laughs) I'm like, I'm having you on today to talk about your business, but I really was curious where it came into play just because, yeah. And you know what I think has been fun for me with you is, Michaela, is to watch your um, passion for serving others be able to have a space in your life again. It, like, makes me a little bit yeah. emotional. Because, um, cool. you know, when you're dark and you're really in that depressive place, even if you have so many gifts and talents and passions, like, they just can't seem to see the light of day. They're just locked up inside of that chamber of darkness. 
<laughs> it's so true. It's so true. And I, I loved, um, you know, I found so much joy in my business, uh, before I had my baby and I was on Instagram and loved sharing and would do lives and share cooking, you know, classes and did all kinds of things. But there, I, I probably would say like a month into having him, I just got off social media for about the last year, honestly, because it was like, I just, that I was having a really hard time with that of just being excited, um, feeling happy enough to show up to, you know, share anything that I felt was significant enough. But I do feel like there has been a change clearly. And I'm, yeah. ex- my excitement is back <laughs> and joy. And I feel more hopeful, it. So. Oh, I totally feel yeah. it. I feel not just your excitement and I'm sure others that are listening can feel too, but I just feel like your passion for food and what it can do, like how, how to empower women in their consumption of food, preparation of it, like um, just understanding yeah. how they how they can use it to benefit their bodies and not have it be this big, scary question mark. I think the reason earlier, I don't know if I ever got to this point, but the reason I started sharing about my own postpartum weight gain was because I remember the moment that I was going to, like that same night that I went to Target and got clothes that fit me that were a little bit, they were like two sizes bigger, but mm-hmm. hey, they felt good finally. And I didn't have to like, have yeah. skin tight, weird stuff happening Suck in it. the mirror. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh-huh. it was really an act of love, right? I was like, okay, this doesn't feel good for my body and whatever. Yeah. Um, I just remember thinking it was, it was so daunting and intimidating to think about weight loss. And especially if you're still breastfeeding, there's just like such a, yeah. a fine line. So to find somebody who has been there, done that, um, has struggled with the body image, has this passion for food, has five years experience and has a nutrition bachelor's degree, if that's what you call it. Um, yep. yeah, it just, it just feels like a miracle. And I love that, um, you really do walk the walk. Like you're in my membership, you're like working on your own mental health constantly. And that only adds mm-hmm. to the, what you can offer women. That's not even like detracting at all. And I just, it's, it's amazing. Thank you. I think you're like the full package. I'm really excited to have you oh, on. You're so wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited to have you on and you guys. So it's at chef Yes. On Instagram at chef. Michaela and Michaela is M I C H A E L A. So we will throw that in the show notes so you guys can find her. Cause I'm sure you're going to just be educating and giving so much value yes. and help to people like with such yes. a heart for mamas and postpartum. So I love it. Yeah. I'm so grateful to you. I'm glad that, um, our paths have crossed both in the membership yes. and then we also well. in this way. This is so fun. So thank you for letting me have you. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you so much for being on. It's been a pleasure. Okay, you guys, go visit Michaela's Instagram. And if you need mental health help, as always, you know where to go. It'll be here in the outro in a minute, in the membership. And we'll talk to you next week. Take care, you guys. Hi, my darling friend, Lizzie here. If you love the content here on my podcast, then you need to check out the Postpartum Coach membership. My membership is where you can bridge the gap between listening and understanding healing postpartum on a logical level and then applying it and feeling change. That's what we do in the membership. The most valuable tool that I have for you in my membership by far is the postpartum anxiety course. It's my course where I walk you through my three-part postpartum healing process. You can watch or listen to the course. I made it for moms, digestible and to the point. Then you've got a private podcast, a members only Facebook community, as well as the trifecta of postpartum healing, weekly coaching, meditation, and yoga. You do not want to miss my membership if you are postpartum and are serious about healing. So go to lizzylangston.com forward slash membership today and step into your healing. That's lizzylangston.com forward slash membership. I'll see you inside my love.